If you don't know Shoe Nice, then you don't know YouTube. Here's to you. <laughs> People must think I'm nuts. Look at Xander over there with his new sign, you suck. I'm telling you, a little bit of money. Look what happens to people. A bunch of co-workers won like $320 million. A guy forgot to throw his dollar in, so they're trying to decide whether to give him something. Well, come on, will you? I mean, deodorant? Crazy dude, this is crazy! Welcome to the Dynamite Gizmo Podcast, everyone. Episode 159. Oh my god. We're only at 100 in episode 59. And let me tell you something. I got someone special on this episode, people. Someone special. <laughs> I can't even believe this just happened. I just filmed an episode of the podcast with the one and the only shoe nice himself i <laughs> i don't know what's going on i don't know what is going on i went from having nobody to having kyle c and then immediately following kyle c i got shoe nice on the podcast when i said in the last episode Let's get Shoe Nice on. I was joking, okay? I was fucking joking. And I got him on. He's on the fucking... This episode, he's on here. I can't believe this. This is insane to me, what is happening. Uh, So, yeah. I mean, I, there's not a whole lot I gotta say. You just want to get into the episode, don't you? I mean, I would, too. We talk about stuff... H3, we talk about Keemstar, we talk about his military experience, we talk about the stuff that he eats. It's beautiful. I feel like I'm finally heading in the right direction with the Dynamite Gizmo podcast, and I cannot wait to see who I have on next. I don't have anyone in mind of who I would like to get on next, but uh, the next episode might just be me. And then the, you know, I'm going to continue to try to get guests on the podcast, obviously. Now that I've got Shoe Nice under my belt, I think I'm, uh... <laughs> Dude! This is crazy! I can't believe I got Shoe Nice. If you don't know who Shoe Nice is... I mean, come on, man. Come on! This is insane. So I guess just enjoy the episode. There's not a whole lot mu much more I could say. Just enjoy this episode with Shoe Nice. Thank you so much. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're back for another guest interview on the Dynamite Gizmo podcast. I can't believe this episode. Let me tell you, this is insane for me. Is it's going to be insane for you? I got, I got one of the the OG YouTubers. This guy has been around since the dawn of YouTube. Um, you know, you definitely know who this is. I can't even believe this is happening. Uh, you know, he doesn't really need much of a further introduction. This guy is eating everything on the planet. He's drinking everything on the planet. Uh, you can't beat him. You can't compete with him. Here he is, the great and wonderful, the man, the myth, the legend, Shoe Nice, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much, bro. I Dude. thought you were talking about somebody else for a second. I was looking for Don Wayne or somebody. <laughs> no, dude, like... I'm still, I'm still like starstruck right now. I can't even believe you were willing to come on my podcast. Like this is incredible for me. I like helping out the little guy because I know what it's like starting out. Yeah, for sure. And like, so you had a channel before this channel, right? I mean, you've had a lot of YouTube channels. Well, I started out in 2008 just watching YouTube videos, you know, just had that name like everybody else. And yeah. then around 2010, I figure I would upload some jokes. So December 8th, this, this December will be actually my 10th year on YouTube. 
But um, I got shut down and had to start over again. They actually apologized to me because a lot of channels got lost during this whole chaotic thing of trying to clean up YouTube. Yeah. So they were like, we can't get your channel back, but here, start again. So at least I'm like one of the only YouTube channels that's ever been able to get a second check mark and work their way up to 10 million subscribers after being shut down because you're not allowed to do that. Right. So you, you're actually verified again, because you weren't for a long time there. We're, we're, we're all right in limbo right now. Anybody who had 100,000 subscribers after last October 2019, we're all in limbo waiting, and the applications are finally going through. But I was able to get back Shoe Nice 22 Don't ever change your name on YouTube. It's yeah. number one thing. You lose all your search op optimization. But I just went back, and I was just like, hey, and I've got Shoe Nice 22 back. I'm getting my check mark, and I'll work my well. I don't care if I'm 70 years old, bro. Eating an adult diaper. I'm going to get a million and then 5 million and then 10 million subscribers. Because there's people out there that have tons and tons of subs, but it's just such a big world, dude. You have 10 million people that know H3H3 and Logan Paul, but then you have 10 million people in Japan or Turkey or, you know, yeah. that just know anybody else because they just they get up during the day they do their work school work and then they go on their youtube to whatever they're you know subscribed to and they watch the videos and then go to bed so you don't really get that far out of your three-foot world unless you really just are engaged in youtube 24 7 yeah and like answer the question i don't even remember what you asked. sorry bro <laughs> no i no it's you you pretty much covered it there but um like, I've been on YouTube since the dawn of its inception. Like, I still remember in 2005 when YouTube was first created. I'll, I was only, like, 10 or 11 years old. And YouTube back then was just, like, stupid cat videos and little kids falling off their bikes and stuff. And then, and then when I started making videos in 2007, I was so obsessed with YouTube. I And still to this day, I want nothing more to than to be an, a success on YouTube, but it's been, it's not easy, and, you know, right now with this podcast, with the, with this podcast, I'm finding my consistency, and I'm learning that you need to have a consistent schedule, and you gotta, and so right now, I feel like I'm starting to really figure things out. My channel's still nothing, but, you know, I take advice from guys like you, and H3H3, like, they're one of my favorite channels to watch, so yeah, I really appreciate you coming on here. My number one rule, dude is well it's just i'm the king of spam i've gone through hundreds of social accounts but my number one rule bros every morning when you wake up or when you can find a time in the day subscribe to 10 youtube channels that have less than a thousand subscribers nobody's going to recognize you if you're on subscribing to iDubs. these people that comment it just disappears mm -hmm. go into 10, 10, 10 youtube channels it doesn't matter if they're riding a motorcycle playing a violin, sewing sweaters for poodles. Just go in there, comment, say, hey, cool channel, and subscribe. And nine out of ten people won't come back, but that one person that doesn't subscribes, and you just got to build, build, build. I went on four Snapchats and followed 5,000 people on four different Snapchats in three months to get myself to 100,000 subscribers from, like, 28,000. I just sat in a hotel bathroom and just constantly, mm -hmm. I had all these high schools across America just jumping on cafeteria tables screaming, shoot nice, shoot nice. Because <laughs> whatever, whatever high school had the best thing, I was going to get a tattoo on my chest Whoa. of the school. They're off, they're off to college now, they forget, but I still got my 100,000 subscribers. Now, did you do that like back in the day before you were even known? Um, yeah, I did all this stuff, bro. I mean, I'm 51 right now. I probably, you know, ate my first crazy thing for my brothers when I was like four. Yeah. I, I, I used to take my mom's tampons and dip them in the water. <laughs> yeah. And they'd open up and I would just, we would just throw them around the house. They'd stick to the wall like a spitball. Yeah, well, so I, I was in the yard and I was eating one of them. Bro, I'm like, What's that? Well, we're all like in first grade. So I ate this one dry, and it opened up in my throat like an umbrella. Oh, my so God. I'm choking with a tampon in my throat, and the kid got so scared, he went and got my mom, and she spanked me, and thank God for that string hanging out of my mouth. <laughs> that was my first real stunt. 
and I just went all the way up. It wasn't really like I just wanted to entertain people. It wasn't like one of them freaks on that show, um, Strange Addiction. Yeah. They were going to have me on the show, but they were like, dude, this guy's just an actor. So, I mean, but I love that Elmer's pace. And when I was a kid, I would just eat like notebook paper. And I, I don't know what it was. It's just I, they took away Elmer's pace, and now it's just nasty glue sticks. But. Once yeah. I realized my stomach could handle all this stuff, I took it right to high school and cake parties and going out roofing out of town. I would just do all the three beer bottle tricks, no hands. And I was always an entertainer no matter where I went. I had to do something for somebody. When people knew me, they, you know, I would just go to a lunch at a bar and the owner would just let me take over and eat beer coasters, eat rocks out of the parking lot, you know. <laughs> Drinking the toilet bowl the next day. Wow. So yeah, before YouTube, I was, yeah. And I joined YouTube as a resume to be like a TV star, to be honest with you. I went through all oh, this yeah. college and applications. And I know if I get into that Netflix series, you know, YouTube, who? Uh, but I didn't I didn't realize I was going to become a cult. You know, there's some freaks out there that need you nice and well. I can't, you know. It's like I took them off of their antidepressant medicine and soups. <laughs> I'm over here eating tampons, you know what I mean? People are treating me like Kurt Cobain, and I'm still alive. Yeah, well, I remember I remember watching your um, your two-part video series of your entire life story, and I remember hearing, like, you ate, like, a full pack of cigarettes when you were, like, four or something. Oh, that's right. I forgot about that. That was my first actual stunt, but that yeah. wasn't... Because I turned blue as a smurf, and, and my mom would always tell me the stories about what happened, you know? But I got a big old gas room where my uncle bounced me off the end of the sofa <laughs> to the into the fireplace. So yeah, do you, do you, I mean, I, I, I've always been just in and out of the hospital since I was a kid. Do you think you have like any brain damage from how many times you've been hit in the head? Um, I, I wonder. I, I want to work with the Desert Storm one where I got blown off the back of a five ton. What? But, um, yeah, that happened. Yeah, that was um, that was in '91. Just I, I was screwing around. I was screwing around, actually. So I could have went home, but I recovered and went back to duty. Right. So, like, people are getting more and more in depth into actual brain damage research, and they're discovering that even like football players have CTE. You know. Oh, yeah. So, like, it's you okay. Okay. you might you might you you probably have some sort of brain damage because you've been through so much shit in your life. Right. Well, yeah. I mean, I've been hitting the head with a hammer. Um, then I got thrown in the fireplace <laughs> and then I, I mean, I fell through a skylight 28 feet landed on yeah. my head um, back 15 years ago, but and then like I those... still seem like I could drive the school bus, you know? Yeah. Like you're still functionable for sure. Yep. And you're still a hilarious guy and you've become a major success on YouTube. I could probably work my way into the VA. I got free medical forever being a combat vet, but I yeah. can probably sign up for the monthly check because, I mean, ever since I got out of a desert storm, you know, I could never hold down a relationship, friends. I, didn't, I could never hold a bank account. You know what I mean? Sounds good, right? Yeah. I didn't I didn't know you were in desert storm. I don't think you mentioned that in your video. It's in my Vice documentary. And um, it's, Vice? it's just known. Yeah, yeah, I was on Vice. Oh, shit. I didn't even know that. Yeah, you're you do you're famous now because you're in the bracket of people that interviewed me. Gosh, point out Vice yeah. and this guy. Man. What do they call you in the studio? Nothing. I'm a nobody. <laughs> I'm saying, like, but you don't have a nickname. Sorry. Well, like I'll refer to myself as like Dynamite or Dynamite Gizmo. That's like my brand. I've been using that since I was 12 years old. Yeah, I, I, what I can do is I can, you know, share you around, bro. I'll take this and share it on Reddit's like H3H3's Reddit. I'm in there. Hell yeah, so, dude. I, mean, I, can, I can get you out there and, you know, you, I'll probably be the most famous person you ever interview. Yeah. And then it'll go down, but who cares? You got to start somewhere. Yeah, no doubt. Like, I, I, I would definitely appreciate that. You got the voice, too. You can tell you got that voice and you know how to, you know stay away and close to a microphone and yeah 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 you know, you know, you got that knack to be an interviewer or whatever well I, like keemstar <laughs> ramble on about the book. yeah we're, we're gonna we're gonna talk about keemstar in a second here um but 
I uh yeah, I've been I've been literally creating YouTube videos since I was a child. It's been my dream, so I I you know, I'm starting to feel like I'm knowing what I'm doing right now and this podcast, I'm at 100 and you're like the 159th episode. So I've been doing this for a few years now too. And I haven't What's that? On YouTube alone you're uploading? And yeah, and then I do an audio version on like Spotify and Google Music and iTunes. Oh, you're going to make me famous, dude. I'm going to have a million subscribers. <laughs> no, you're going to make me famous, okay? I'm doing nothing for you. Like, this is, you know. i tell you what, I like helping out people, and people help out me. But, I mean, all the people I helped out, I mean, they just, whatever. Yeah. yeah I don't want a list of people that, I mean, because I used to have a huge Facebook. I went to, like, five different high schools. So I, when I became famous and learned about Facebook and how I could share this guy eating a roll of toilet paper <laughs> while talking about, you know, Grandma Mary gets buried. I mean, I got a lot of enemies coming off of there, but that's how I got, you know, really popular. Yeah. You know, so I'm just on Facebook when you could. It's hard to do that now. Yeah, I, I can't stand Facebook. I stay away from that completely. I feel like Facebook's nothing. There's people that still pretend they're me on there, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, um... So are you still sober? You've been sober for over 50 days now? Yeah, 52. Nice. This afternoon. Yeah. But I had to quit. I had no choice. It's physically, you know, I can't drink anymore. Yeah. I'd be good here. I've, I've, I've never really been a big drinker, but I've been a huge pothead since I was like 16 years old. I'm really into the marijuana. My God, dude, I just started dance today. Did, Did you? That's so weird. That. Yeah, I just got rid of flour, and I'm, I just got like eight for eight, um, eight grams for eighty bucks. What? This deal, all different flavors, and um, I, I, the rig now you don't even need like the big rig. They got a long glass straw, and that's, you just yeah. stick it right in your little thing. That's called a nectar collector, isn't it? Now, whatever it is, it's easy for me because. <laughs> Wait a minute, rig, so you, you, I got my hands are huge. You got eight grams for eighty dollars. Yeah. That is an insane price. Like I'm I live in Canada and I actually work at a cannabis dispensary, but like we'll pay eighty grand eighty dollars for one gram. What? It's insane. I'm coming to go I'm coming to sell cannabis in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, but email me after the podcast no, I'm just <laughs> Like I live in Alberta and it's it's, I'm sure it's different in British Columbia. Like that's kind of where the the whole man, marijuana thing kind of originated from. But yeah, in Alberta, everything, all the cannabis is regulated by the government, so it's really shitty that way. And it's terrible. California, it's just so expensive. Yeah, I moved here to smoke weed for my Crohn's disease. To be honest with you, once I knew there was going to be a state with legal marijuana, I was gone. And I still haven't got my medical card, which I should, but yeah. I have a lot of reasons. Well, in, in Canada, it's in Canada, it's federally legal across the entire country, so you don't even need a medical card here. Yeah, I, I can't go back into Canada, bro. Me and my buddies, when we were stupid and dumb and young, we like ran up a twenty-five thousand dollar hotel bill in Montreal and took off. <laughs> So I'm really not going to get back there. I don't know how long the uh, statute of limitations is. Yeah. It's back in like 1988. I'm sure you're good now, but yeah, you you don't even want to come to Canada. It's not much better than... You know. uh, I really don't travel anymore, bro. I can't. I was on a nightmare train ride, planes. I just don't fly anymore. Yeah. I flew for time. No, and that's it. So you live in California right now? No, I'm in, I'm in Boulder, Colorado. Oh, I see. I, I might be going to California, or I might not. It just depends. But all I need is with some Wi-Fi, you know. Yeah, for I used sure. To have a song called Whiskey and Wi-Fi, but I don't drink anymore. Yeah. So have you have you ever come in contact with Badlands Chugs? No, but he, he used to watch me way back in the day. He blew up. I mean, a lot of people knew him in the rap and you know the music scene. But yeah, I mean, I, I've known him. He's known me for years on YouTube. He right. gave me a big shout out in one of his videos. But I, I beat him with the honey and I beat him with the Yuhu because he left a lot in each bottom of each Yuhu. I think I even dropped one. 
but he don't care. He loves shoe nice. And he's one of them guys that will mention me when he's huge, you know? But yeah. he went over to TikTok. Everybody thinks TikTok is just for kids. It's not. No. There's 800 million, 800 million people on there from The Rock. Yeah. Everybody on there. And um, he blew up within two months. He had over a million subscribers. He challenges kids. Yeah. You know, on that. His fans come in and you have these, you know, these two college kids going, all right, we can beat them. And they'll do their stunt. And then they do a duet. He does a duet with them. Yeah. So. He's one of them nice guys that, you know, works with the bands. Like, don't touch that mouse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, de- I definitely watch him on, on TikTok and YouTube. I first discovered him on YouTube, but yeah. I was against TikTok for the longest time, but now I'm getting involved with it because I'm realizing how uh, crucial it is to, you know, making yourself become a success nowadays. But I would just love to see Badlands Chugs go against you in, like, some sort of chugging competition. See, he can do definitely the more. I can't do that gallon. I don't know. My body down there shuts down around a little over half a gallon. Oh, really? Liquid. But everybody's like, oh, oh yeah, you, it's harder to slam water than it is to slam vodka, to be honest with you. Really? Because vo- vodka's light, and it just the first couple sips will just burn and then numb your throat. I guess. So, like, water just fills, and you just want to throw up immediately. Do you I'd feel- rather slam fifth of vodka than a gallon of water any day do you feel like you could have done it in your younger years i did you did um a gallon of water or a bottle of liquor <laughs> like a gallon of water um I, the most i've ever slammed it was I, I i did a gallon of milk on youtube on my first channel did and you puke it took me it took me a while no i didn't puke but it took me a while you didn't puke. it was like a Turn a 20 minute video. Because everyone else who's ever tried the gallon milk challenge has always puked. Yeah, but I'm just like a freak of nature, bro. I mean, there's people that can't even bite off the top of a grail of the Quran, and I can eat every Quran <laughs> in the box and the box that came in, you know? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't even. It's weird, but people put glue on their tongue, you know what I mean? I'll just suck it down. I got a, I got a, can't, I got a container of blue glue. That I was, I was going to do for TikTok, but they're strict on that eating stuff. They don't like that at all. Yeah. You can't, you can't slam liquor or whatever. I'm working up to a partnership where I can work with marketers now. I need 100,000 subscribers, and I'm getting up to about 86, 87. I thought you had 100,000. Not on TikTok. Oh, on TikTok. TikTok. Yeah. yeah, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm Right now, I'm just waiting for my check mark on YouTube, and that's when I take and all my humor, I just go into famous um, channels, video uploads. That's how I met H3H3. I was the top comment for Eminem song, uh, Nicki Minaj. And there's 10, 15,000 people that gave you a thumbs up and you have that check mark. Yeah. They just go look for you. So yeah. Yeah, I go into Pootie Pie, right? And I got a membership, but only members only can talk. Yeah. It's still going like this. Wow. And if I go in there with the check mark, people just see that 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 the sheep of YouTube. Oh, oh he's a verified account, and that's where I'll be able to climb towards a million faster than what I'm doing now. Right. Have, have I work six eight hours a day spamming? Yeah. Have you ever had any side effects from eating or drinking these crazy things? No. One time I slammed a bottle of Everclear 160. I think oh. I was just passed out, but my buddy couldn't wake me up, so. They like dragged me to the hospital and I got my stomach pumped and I'm literally like, dude, Sven, I don't ever do that again. So I really never slammed around my buddies. And the one time I went out, I got arrested in Daytona Beach. And that's the famous mugshot that goes around. I and my buddy, the, he was at the hotel. He's like, dude, don't go out. And I just stumbled over, got in the middle of a fight that was already going on. <laughs> I ended up in. I end up in jail with some corrections officer looking in the cell going, what are you eating tampons and rocks for? <laughs> wow. I was like, how about how much is bail, bro? So, yeah, like, but but I, I was laying in the jail cell and I could hear my voice. And I'm like, was this some kind of a dash cam they're watching? Did I run over somebody with a four-wheeler? Because I didn't remember anything. I just woke up in jail. So never travel after you slam a bottle. Yeah, uh, I mean, announcement for the day. I'm not much of a drinker, like I said. I I just stick to the cannabis. It 
was just a public service announcement for people that watch this. Yeah. <laughs> so, so what do you what do you think about dabs? Do you really like them more than than the dried flower? I think it's going to help me sleep better. I definitely got a quicker high. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I, I've done it before, so we'll see how it works out. Right now, yeah, I got eight grams. So. Yeah. Like the only thing about doing dabs and shattering that is that your tolerance level becomes so high so quickly that you become dependent on that constant high THC high, you know? Right, you're almost like a crackhead. I see him in line at the dispensaries. <laughs> yeah, but like I can't believe you're getting 8 grams for $80. That's insane to me. Yeah, and they're all different flavors too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I just, yeah, I mean... I, I'm I'm I'm, di I'm different than other people, you know. But I'll just quit it and then go back to flour yeah. or whatever. Yeah, cannabis well, is, cannabis is mostly... cannabis is is so different than alcohol. Like it's, you know, you can still function on cannabis. You get to a point where you're so drunk that you can't even do anything. I was a functional raging drunk. I hate that word alcoholic. You know, alcoholism <laughs> was a disease made up for the weak minded. You don't right. need a group. People at an AA meeting, a sponsor, a gold coin, you know, 12 steps. I did the 12 steps to AA, but somebody left a bottle of vodka on the 13th. You know, <laughs> I used to roll joints off of my AA book. I went to rehab because my father thought I had a drinking problem in high school. I learned about acid and mushrooms. I came out of rehab. I couldn't wait to trip. So, yeah, that didn't work. Yeah, but I I quit, I quit opiates without any kind of, you know, I, I, when I quit drinking, I don't get like the, these shakes or whatever. I just, I don't know. I just mind over matter. I don't have a mind, so it don't matter. <laughs> yeah, well, I, re I remember you saying in your video about your life, you said, uh, clean is when you're a pussy and don't do anything. So, so you feel like you don't... Uh, like, you're okay with quitting alcohol, but you're going to still be involved with the other drugs and whatnot. And if you can say off pills and booze, then you're fine. And I've never done heroin or meth, so. Yeah. yeah I've, I smoked marijuana going on 40 years, you know, coming up in 2021, so it hasn't harmed me. Right. And I don't, I don't think it's, I don't even consider cannabis to be a drug, to be honest. I don't know how you feel. For the recreational, I was on. I, I I was diagnosed with Crohn's disease. It's like colitis. It just breaks down your colon faster than others during your lifetime. And they give you these horse pills, and I'm just popping these pills three times a day. I'm getting. Uh, they're taking some of the symptoms away, but when I moved out of my house at 17, I wasn't on my dad's insurance. I just threw away the prescription, started smoking mad weed with my friends and my brother, and. Uh, oh, I've been really in um, remission probably 30 years from, and these people taking the pills, they're sick, they can't go anywhere, they can't two <laughs> yeah. foot from the bathroom. It's not funny. Some people lose yeah. their cold. They got the colostomy bag. I'm sucking down cactus and rocks out of the parking lot, dude, and I'm healthiest man alive. It's not Steve will do it. It's shoe nice, and I'm yeah. telling them. Yeah, you're you're like you're like a superhero. You're you're beyond anybody else on this planet. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, I have my limits. I don't. I not like you can. I can suck down gasoline and all these things. People want me to do antifreeze. You know. I, that, I just. I don't know. I think I've built up like my stomach's just like an old leather boot. You know, <laughs> that the roofer's worn for years. It just looks at whatever and passes it along. Yeah. Um, have you ever eaten anything like really crazy, like like poop or anything? <laughs> Just I, I at a party one time, I think I sucked down a piece of puppy shit for a couple of months. <laughs> then I ate a piece of dried shit. It's on live leak, but it was out in the sun for two weeks. All the bacteria is burnt up by the hot sun. Yeah, it's, like <laughs> it's, a, it's just like tree bark, you know. It's really beef jerky. <laughs> it's like beef jerky. <laughs> So it tastes all right then. I, I, I don't do that, you know. I, I mean, people pay me money, and I try to do it for YouTube, and it backfired. It backfired? How could that backfire? Because they didn't like me eating dog shit. On oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That sucks. That sucks. Like, YouTube's too strict nowadays with their guidelines. I 
was on Live League making good money uploading. They feature me every day. And people hated it. But these people on Live League, they're these desensitized souls, man. They, they just watch humanity kill each other. Yeah. I went on there to bypass all that violence. And then when they cut my pay in half, I'm like, I'm out of here. You guys are a bunch of idiots. Yeah. You know I mean? It's just like, if you watch that day in and day out, that's the problem with society, really. It's the internet. Yeah, I know. I know. We're all becoming... And how are you talking to you, though? So I guess we got to put up with ISIS to have great interviews like that. <laughs> yeah, for sure. People are way too sensitive nowadays, and it's, you know... You, you got to try be... and stay with the whole government. I don't even care. I got legal weed. I'm 51. I fought for this country. I don't pay taxes. Come catch me. You know what I mean? Yeah, so you yeah. Like humanity, I don't even want to deal with them anymore. This is perfect, you know? We're digitally talking to each other. I don't need to be sitting next to you in a studio. We can do it just like this. Yeah, and I feel like the coronavirus really perpetuated this idea of doing it over Skype or whatever, you know? Yeah. You're so much better than Ethan from H3H3. You know, <laughs> just keep interrupting people. <laughs> yeah, I know that I know that was a complaint of yours. And, like, I can't... I can... I'm a ball busting raw comic, and some people I do offend with my humor. Yeah, like I can, like I guess this was more when you were drinking, but like I can never tell if you're telling the truth or if you're just putting on this act. Especially when it comes to H three, like one minute you're their friend, the next minute you're talking shit about them. Like, do you actually like H three? We're we're always talking in emails, bro. He calls me the um, captain of chaos. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great I term. I to the producers and everything. I'm probably going to end up going out there sometime this winter or early spring 2021. And if I'm not a weekly guest, I'll be uh, right on there every time because they need they, they 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 know they need something else and they love me and yeah, that'll be a combination. You know, we just working out because I'm going to probably be living a few hours outside of LA. And once we get that trust factor, and then they're just going to love me. I'll yeah. just be in the corner. Papa Shuey. Papa Shuey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, that would be incredible because uh, whenever I... I'm doing it, I guess I'm going to come live with you, man, and we'll start a show. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. Let's do it. But, um... Ethical as... morning can do a weekend. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so did, did... He's like, hey. <laughs> when you... Ethan had you on his last podcast when he was, you know, when he was really deep into that Keemstar beef, and you you said on the podcast that you you were the one who took down that Go Canaro video. Is that true? Well, they didn't even know what I was going to say. They just, you know, they said, "Hey, can you call in?" And I called in and I said that. <laughs> but I, I I don't I don't record videos, bro. I yeah. never did. I, I had a conversation with him, whatever, but I, I, I was in such a drunken blackout. This is like going back two years, and these guys are still arguing about it. I'm just this middleman, bro, in this whole Keemstar and whatever. Keemstar, I couldn't believe he uploaded that video after Gonconero got it taken down. Yeah, I know. You, there's a built-in code that YouTube has already known that they took that down. That's how they stopped like a when there's a major train wreck or whatever, you know, yeah. but everybody wants to get that video. Back in the day, you could sit there and you could live off of everybody's content and the, the, they would never even know. Right. We got this this whole algorithm and mm -hmm. they got this superhero thing where you can just be a snitch and YouTube yeah. sends you some stuff. I forgot about pictures. that. That's why I love Cameo, bro. I'm going to be a Cameo guy forever, man. They love me over there. And now that I've been on there a year, I'm starting to get repeat birthday parties, college kids, high school graduates. They go all through life now. And every time they need to celebrate, they get a shoe nice Cameo. That's awesome. And you get a check every morning, man. A great company. I love that app. Yeah, it's it's doing wonders for a lot of people. But I'm, I'm, I'm wondering, like, I just want to get back to Keemstar here. Is he? Does Keemstar hate you? Um, not at all. I talk to him in DMs all all the time. He came in and told me I was the funniest dude he's ever met in his life. <laughs> you know, and he caught up with that whole, you know, oh, well, shoot, now you're supposed to be raping kids. This is what somebody said. And he said it years ago. And then when he brought it back up, when 
and him. And this is the only reason why I came into that whole H three H three Keemstar argument is because Keemstar had to say that I was a pedophile while arguing with H three H three because I was one of his um, podcast interviewees. Right. And I went into Keemstar and I messaged him and I said, "Dude, let's not start this all over because he knows exactly what happened." And then somebody actually brought up the tweet. I don't even know how they found it. It was like four years ago, and he swears he never heard about it never he goes but if it was there it was there and he apologized and yeah we're we're cool man so and i don't care you can call me a drunk you can sit there and troll me all you want don't, don't say i rape kids it's it's youtube you know what i mean yeah There's some demented people out there on youtube i got one hater he hires people to pretend they're my ex-wife my son a gay lover i mean well, how do you take up so much time in your life but wow. he just got ah, he didn't just pick on me. He didn't really pick on me. He could never touch me. I live in a hotel with no family or friends. But he he picked on somebody and they found out his address. So now, you know, karma's a bitch and he's catching some wind. And I'm just sitting back laughing because I started it all. <laughs> right. I have haters that hate me, but they 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 battle each other and they've been they got each other fired from jobs and I was always that kid on the playground, bro, that just got Johnny and Frank to fight, telling each one that the other one called their mother fat. <laughs> well, they're fighting, dude. I'd just be sitting on a swing, dude. So, so you were like you were like that asshole kid that no one liked then. No, I had lots of friends because I was that class clown that would eat everything and get stuck right. in a garbage can and you know lick the chalkboard and smack the racers on my face. But like. You know, I, I've, I've, exper- we've all experienced kids like that, and like, to, to, to I took it rare though. Yeah, to like, to like, just have someone start a fight just to start a fight is like, I mean, you know, that was a joke, bro. I yeah. didn't sit on a swing listening to the Halloween music. No, bro. I just, I was always just that class clown. I was never a bully. I always bullied somebody, but. When YouTube came around, I was the nicest guy in the world, and then all these haters came in. Yeah, and I was never a hater, but then I just turned into Mister Mister Master Troll because I, I was one man yeah. against the people back in the King of the World day, King of the Web. I mean, I, I had like big time YouTubers all making hate videos about me <laughs> all in one day. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, my fault. It was just fans. I'm not going and threatening people. I'm just in a competition. Right. You can't consider fans when you got three or four thousand people that are going and be, you're gonna die if Shoe Nice doesn't win. <laughs> yeah, it's not. It's they not. That, it's that likes unicorns. It's nice to actually like talk to you as a person rather than just see you as your your character that you play on your Shoe Nice channel. Because you're that's the only thing that sucks about these interviews is some people you know you break your character and they don't like you anymore. It's really weird. Yeah. How I used to talk. Hey, everyone. Yeah. Shoot again. Well, basically. <laughs> <laughs> now I want to be like you, dude. I just want to hang out. And I go live every day, two hours a day, five days a week, and my income has tripled with my Google AdSense. I don't even worry about uploading videos and eating stuff anymore. I'm yeah. just going to constantly get people. It's going to be like the Today Show, the Weather Channel. You're going to tune in, and if you don't, you'll be able to see it with a bunch of ads. Right. So uh, that's I'm, I'm doing, man. Yeah. I'm not killing organs anymore. Hot sauce, all that stuff, I'm done with it. Right. Because it's weird. YouTube's weird. Like, people find a character, and they stick to it, even in interviews. And so you, the audience really thinks that the character you were playing is actually you. And even I thought that, you know? Yeah, I mean, I just, like I said, I've always been that class clown, the guy that's got to be at the cake party in the middle of everybody, you know, slamming a bottle of vegetable oil. I mean, it's just like, you know, Will Ferrell, Chris Farley, I mean, yeah. Jim Carrey. We just, you know, we're not insane, but we're you have to have that little bit of whatever to keep that character or to bring that character out. Right. And are, are you still willing to box someone on YouTube? I got papers that I say I'm insane. All right, dude. I can't be around people. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> now, well, what I want to do before I die is I just want to go into one mixed martial arts match, dude. Whether it's a senior league, whether whatever. 
and it goes into a further thing. I'm, I'm right now. I'm, I'm just going to get settled into where I have my own gym. But I come from a line of boxers in my family. We had the speed bag, heavy bag. I used to fight groups of people. I mean, these hands weren't made for sewing sweaters, bro. Yeah. And, but that one fight just to see, yeah, man. Because I know you can't hurt my head with a human hand, especially with, you know, padding on it. Because I just, I've been hit with crowbars, tire irons, baseball bats. Yeah. Cops aluminum. beating the shit out of you. Yeah, aluminum bounces off your head more. <laughs> I'd rather hit with wooden. <laughs> so you, you yeah, definitely. It's like, yeah, I'm not trying to brag, but I just, I know I was born one on one with another human being and people laugh, but I. I've broken up. My three buddies were getting beat up in an alley by a group of five dudes. And I came in there and I took care of them all. And they're just like, oh, my God, dude. Yeah. And they talked about it for decades. So to this day, they don't forget about it. Yeah, well, just listening to your stories, I mean, it's clearly – like I, listening to your stories and just seeing your build, I can already assume you're obviously someone who could dominate anyone in a fight. So I feel like you should fight Keemstar or Logan Paul or something. But see, uh, Logan Paul, I mean, he's an actually pretty good. He went up against an MMA guy and, you know, wrestling and stuff. It would be good. Yeah, just in a gym scene. Oh. You can find him on his um, channel, I think. But he hangs out with that one guy. He's, um, he's yeah. a Hispanic dude that's in. He's a really tough guy. And he even complimented Logan for wrestling good. But, I mean, yeah, I mean, uh, Keemstar, man, he's got the waistline of uh, the king from the movie Shrek. <laughs> I yeah. Can really fight I just, I mean, you know. No, but I it, know he's going to please my haters threaten me. I'll come for. I mean, I'm for real, man. When I put on the gloves and I just know, I just, I don't know if something happens, and I'm going to show the world, bro. Well, I <laughs> feel like my, I feel, I, I feel like Logan Paul would probably be a good competition, being that he was trained by like Shannon Briggs and he has some experience, but like, but Keemstar. And he got my main channel shut down. He what? He got my main channel shut down because him and his buddies went to the Japanese suicide force and they had that <laughs> yeah. video. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hanging. So when that went to Good Morning America and everything, bro, they came in and they shut down everybody. Me, L.A. Beast, everybody had to fight for their channel back. Why? I had so many haters and reporters that I couldn't really, you know, get into that mix of the people that were getting back on. But why would that affect you, though? Because the next day, it was on every single morning channel. It was just, it was, and YouTube had to clean up their act. They oh. had the, Tide the Tide Pods was going on at the time, too, where the two kids got really sick doing this. So now you got Tide Pods and this idiot. So we even had an email come to us saying that they're going to start getting rid of the bad actors. Right. And my, like people were arguing over my main channel. One would shut it down, and the guy would come in at work at night and turn me back on. And it happened four times. And they, I literally got an apology from them. But I'm moving on, dude. I'm not going to sit and cry about the past when the future is such a blast. Yeah. I'm cameo. Shoot so, nights. So your main channel got shut down because of Logan Paul's Suicide Forest video. Yeah, it eventually led to that. If the, he never did that, we wouldn't have had the CEO come in. And, you know, a lot of things were changed that week. And wow. I think the whole... Well, yeah, I think the whole system changed. It wasn't. It was the. It was the straw that broke the camel's back. I never got yeah. that same because there's no straw in a desert where a camel is. <laughs> I don't know a bale of hay and then the straw or uh, the straw from McDonald's. How's that going to break camel's back? It's solid, yeah. dude. It's a. It's a McDonald's straw, definitely. But yeah, that's just like that. Just added everything up with the Tide Pods. That was on. The Today Show, kids are on YouTube eating Tide Pods, you know, because they look like candy. Right. And now there was a Tide Pod challenge on YouTube, so they got me, because I, I was a challenge channel. Right. You know, this is try and slam a bottle of liquor. I tried to get all my liquor slams off of there. Right. And then I did a parody of a Tide Pod, and they said, no, and they shut me down. So oh. it was just, a, they thought I was actually eating a Tide Pod from the title. Right. They never went into the video to check. So what did you eat instead of a Tide Pod then? Team Star Soul. No, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Just that I made one out of some pieces of colored paper. I made one. Oh, okay. I see. 
I was telling kids not to eat it. It was actually a video supporting YouTube saying don't eat them. But they thought I was pushing it towards, look, and I'm going to do it too. So Right. Have you ever met Keemstar in real life? No, we just talked. I've known him for years. And then, you know, when he said that, we talked in Twitter and then he blocked me. And I, I wasn't on Twitter for probably a good three years. I'm finally back and they let me stay on. So I had a Twitter with 74,000 followers, bro. Oh, wow. When I, I build back up when I share my YouTube videos, people go and watch. I'm fighting haters right now with a bunch of ghost accounts. Once I upload, they'll go in and they'll just keep disliking because they know that hurts a video going out into the algorithms. Right. You want more likes, and, but you can go in and you can comment a hundred times on your own channel, your own comments, and that helps the video get out there. Activity, 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 click, click, clicks. That's how you get your channel. And you know, that's that's why I bothered over a million people, made half a million fan signs and Snapchat signs. There's people all over the world, bro, that have a picture of me holding up a post-it note with their name on it. Yeah. From, from eight, nine years ago. Yeah. <laughs> that, me. that happens so often. Like, people love to pretend to be other people. Yeah. Yeah. I mean... I, it's amazing. People come in on my emails, and still to this day, it's not as bad as it used to be. What are you stupid talking like this to me? I'm like, and it's not even me. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, research. At least, like, I had this huge conspiracy thing back in the day. I shut down a 15,000 Facebook community, all a bunch of rugrats that were trying. They were pissed because I was making fan signs for everybody. I didn't care who you were. You know, I don't want your daughters with JJ. I want your family to watch my kids all day day. You right. know what I mean? Yeah. So I would just, like, these, these dudes would get pissed. Yo, man, what are you doing? I said, whatever, dude, watch my YouTube. So they tried to set me up with a fake Facebook account with my face, my name, and then I'm talking to some dude about, you know, give me this, give me that. And they didn't even talk like I talk. You know, there was one kid who ever pretended they were me. It was too polite. And I've got hundreds and hundreds of people that chat with me every day on Facebook. So come wind of it, the parents of one of the kids I was running this found out and they, they actually had the kid apologize to me on the phone. I was like, whatever, dude, I shut your channel down. Ha <laughs> ha, go to your room. <laughs> wow. But I didn't hang up on them like that. It wasn't a landline. I was just like, these people, man, they, and I, I literally, like I told you, bro, I joined YouTube because I tried through college. I took acting, theater, TV production. I didn't care if I was going to be a journalist, news guy, in or out of the studio, theater. Right. So I said, I'll join YouTube, and eventually somebody will see me. Now, Hollywood's shut down, and you got Netflix, Hulu, Apple. Everybody's going to these channels like Jennifer Aniston and all the actors are smart. And I, if you land me a Netflix series, bro, not you personally. Yeah. I'm just saying, if I can land, that's it, dude. I, that's that's what I wanted to do. I don't want, I want to be like Will Ferrell status, dude. I've been doing right. this for 51 years out of the womb. Yeah. I feel like, I feel like at this point, you could easily get a Netflix series. I mean, you're like, just like, you're a legend on YouTube, and anyone who's anyone knows who you are. You know, and plus I took I took it all, bro. I, took, I mean, like, and you you're born an actor. You can take all the acting in classes you want. And you're still going to be whatever you know is yeah. in your. Yeah, you know, it's it's, it's kind of you can, you can feel it developing at a young age when you're in school. Like you even said, you're the class clown. Right there, you're automatically bred to be uh, you know an actor at that point. Yeah. Because I, I was actually voted class clown in two different high schools the same senior year. And I wasn't in either one of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, because you're already, if you're, if you're willing to make your entire classroom laugh, you know, and you can do it successfully, then you're good. You're golden, like, you know. And so that's why I feel like you became such a success on YouTube. Like, how long did it take? How long did it take for you to actually become a success on YouTube? It, it happened really quick, dude. Once I ate the roll of toilet paper, um, somebody from World's Dumb has seen it, 
and they pay me fifteen hundred dollars for five videos. I'm like, oh my god, I'm famous. Wow. And then R. W. J. Ray William Johnson yep. to get on his show back in the day was yeah. You were cold, and it just phew, I took right off, and I grabbed a bunch of people with me. I had thirty eight thousand subscribers. Cootie Pie had thirteen thousand, and Max Mofo had like eight hundred. Wow. When I when I knew these guys through YouTube. I love, I love, I just love YouTube. Like, it's it's cool watching it evolve from what it once was to what it is now. And sometimes I do miss the old days of YouTube. Like, do you ever feel that way sometimes? Um. Oh, without a doubt. Once the algorithm, once the whole outline changed and then Google bought it, Google page, Google Plus and everything, they should have just slapped YouTube, YouTube. But yeah. I just used to love just, I don't know what it was. I was addicted to like mother nature videos, like tsunamis and floods in India. I don't know. I just love when mother nature, like a landslide. <laughs> right. I didn't watch these other people. I never watched LAB. I never watched any video through. I was always just skip through, you know? Yeah. And it's like, I, 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 I don't know if it's ADHD or whatever, but I, I can't even do two-hour movies anymore. And it's just like, dude, did you watch my vid? Oh, yeah. Did you listen to my song? Oh, you're a great rapper. You know? <laughs> yeah. What are you going to know? You suck. You know? I feel like a lot of people are... It's like some old lady sends you, you know, a picture of her tits. What are you going to say? You know, oh, they're nasty. Oh, thanks a lot. Keep watching my YouTube. You don't know if they're going to jump off a cliff because you disrespected them because you're their YouTube hero. Yeah. I feel like a lot of people nowadays, their attention span has shrunken significantly, especially due to TikTok and, and originally Vine, where it was only six-second videos. Right, right. Some people say that, you know, it's too nice to like this because of marijuana. They say marijuana gives you short-term memory loss, but well, how come I would never to smoke weed again? You know what? People say that, and yeah, that can be true, but I find when I smoke weed, I'm I'm more focused on whatever I'm doing than when I wasn't smoking weed. Right, it was just like driving a forklift, you know what I mean? Yeah. You're more, you pay more attention. Yeah, people are always like, don't don't drink and, and, or I mean, don't drive and smoke cannabis or whatever, but if you get to a point where you can actually uh, still function because your tolerance is at a high enough level, like, when I drive, I'm not trying to promote, like, driving and smoking cannabis, but, like, if you do happen to do it, and you can functionally do it, it allows your brain to like actually pay attention to what's surrounding you. Like you're more focused than when you weren't on cannabis. I, I agree with that 100%. I always said, you know, if you get pulled over and you, they know that you're high on marijuana, they should judge you by your history of experience driving high. Right. <laughs> I mean, I used to, man, roofing, we just drive down the road in a dump truck, beer cans, joints, we didn't care. <laughs> yeah. I was amazed at what we got away with back in the 80s. It was nuts. Yeah, so like like I said, I work at a cannabis dispensary, and like all the packages have these like warning labels on them, and like a lot of, a lot of them say like, do not drive or operate res machinery while using cannabis. More than 4,000 Canadians were injured and 75 died. But, yeah, they, they had cannabis in their system, but what else did they have in their system, you know? Like, were they on opioids? Were they drunk? It's not just the cannabis that causes these accidents. They, they try to push it out here, but it really isn't, you know? They don't care. Yeah. You know, they got something now that you can blow into or whatever, and it shows that you've been smoking weed in the last hour or two. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. I, nothing really came about of that. Right. I I actually, I prefer the American laws towards cannabis than Canada's laws. America seems to be less strict. Like like if if I if in 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 now correct me if I'm wrong, but like in America you could buy like a thousand milligram gummies and chocolates, right? I think um, I think you can. That's the limit. Yeah. I forget actually, with the I know you can only buy like. An ounce a day if you're just recreational. Yeah, but I'm I'm just talking about the I'm just talking about the actual THC content within one chocolate bar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think um I think it's I I thought it was 500 milligrams that you could at one sale. Right. Maybe well, it is. Well, even that is high. Like in Canada, they regulate it at 10 
milligrams across the entire board for the edibles because of the fact that it's chocolate and candy and it appeals to children, which is kind of a stupid argument if you ask me, because, you know, only adults are allowed, only adults are allowed to, to, only adults are allowed to purchase the product, and even if they bring it home, they're going to keep it away from their children like they would their pills or their alcohol, you know? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I just, I don't, I don't know, I got lost in what I was going to say, but it's just, you know, I, I think all of them, you guys are spending a lot of money on weed up there. That's a rich <laughs> Yeah, we are. We, we definitely are. Talking eighty dollars a gram. You, you don't share your dabs with nobody. No, it's <laughs> Keep them I feel like it'll change eventually, though. Like America has always been ahead of us in everything. Right. Um, do you know? Do you know this tubes cousin guy who keeps commenting on your videos? Yeah, that's me. That's you. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was just because he keep... I wanted to make I wanted to make a third channel to help out some people, you know, some with likes and whatever. Because likes, you can just get three channels to like every comment in a video. That helps it like exponentially, wow. and people don't realize that. You have like, I wouldn't even have thought of these strategies until I talked to you, because like the the only people I subscribe to are the people I want to watch. And then you mentioned at the beginning of this episode that you got to subscribe to people who are like nobodies. They're never going to knock on your door, bro. You know, it's just like you got to go out and get them. And you got the people that get lucky and get trapped. I mean, Shane Dawson came back and made a video after six months. And I guess people are saying that he was some kind of, you know, predator on the Internet. Yeah. And there's so it's really strange that now he's all suddenly back on YouTube and they sit there and they trend it, number one, number two. The guy gets 30, 40 million views on a video. He's a multi-millionaire. Oh, I know. And you, you know, YouTube needs to share shoe nice for the mistake they made. Yeah. They need to put space on the front per day and say, yeah, let's get this dude back to half a million subscribers. Yeah, well, like, that's what I was saying. Like, back in the day... The actual people who would be promoted on the on the home page were people who actually, you know, got the likes and whatever. But now the algorithm just promotes the stuff it wants to promote, and it's, you know. Yeah. Well, no, no. The trending is picked, handpicked. There's a table of people that are putting that well, trending. That's what I'm saying. Algorithm. And but you know, and it's trending because they made a trend. Yeah. But I, they, what they need to do is YouTube needs to come up with something that controls people that have ghost accounts that just can sign in. And if you don't have a history on YouTube, I say you don't get to comment or like or dislike videos. Yeah. Because everybody can sit there. My haters have thousands of servers that they went through because I've unblocked and blocked them. It's just a game we play. And these are grown ass men. And it looks like we're finally calming down. The one dude was Docs. The other guy gave up YouTube. I have a couple other, but these are just grown ass men. I told to kiss my ass when I was drunk. It's a YouTube. It's a website. It's not like I came and stole your car and slapped your grandmother upside the head. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. It's a freaking website. And the, the, the hate I produce, these guys, I've destroyed their lives. I've completely changed their life and their life fast. And I'm just an entertainer. It's crazy. You yeah. either love me or you hate me. There's no one between like, yeah, he's okay. Yeah, and that's... I'm like, a hard fan or you want to rip my blue eyes out of my head. <laughs> yeah, that's, you know, that's totally true. And like, I mean, back when you were actually drinking pretty hard, again, like, I was on that same fence. Like, one minute I'm like, oh, Shoe Nice is the coolest guy ever. And then the next minute I'm like, what the hell is wrong with this guy? You know? <laughs> I mean, I never started an argument, to be honest with you, and I don't even go to half of these hate bits, but literally, like, I mean, this dude, uh, he harassed my son from when he was 12. My kid's 20 now. He's going to yeah. be 21 in January. And he's harassed him. I had one guy, the leader of the pack of the Google Hangout, this metal madman guy, he'd go down and film pictures in front of my kid's mother's salon. Wow. And he ended up getting arrested for child porn distribution. Now, when I heard this, I was like, okay, he just didn't seem the type metal madman, you know, metal. 
I, I pray to God to this day that he was trying to do something to me or another hater of his with child porn to get me or somebody in trial, but he got caught with it. So he went to prison for years, and literally he's on a sex offender. His life's wrecked. And if he's a real pervert, then he's a devil, and I wish I never associated with him, even if he, because he started out as a friend. Yeah. And Mr. Metalman, then he doxed my hotel and sent like like 13 orders from different pizza places. This lady who was pregnant, a deli platter. I ran out of money. He started out easy. But then they were literally a group of grown men with not enough teeth to make a pumpkin happy on Halloween. Would sit in there and just, ah. He did the, he, and then some of them have kids. Yeah. Now, it's one thing to believe. It's one thing to believe that I'm this crazy guy and does all this malicious shit. But to know it's not true and to continue to support that group, then you're just a loser. It's like Lord of the Flies. Yeah. You know, you, you just need to be accepted by a group no matter what you're doing. Right. You know, it's just, I, you know, if you don't have haters, you're not doing anything right. Like I said, dude, they're my pencil dick puppet. Yeah. I, I formed them and they can't stand that I'm actually coming back on YouTube. They thought they finally destroyed me and the Logan Paul thing kind of helped it out. But right. these guys are maliciously trying to shut me down. Yeah. Oh, we're, we're getting a bit on time there, bro. Do you want to do a shoot nice part two in a couple months? <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I've got a few more questions I could ask, but yeah. If... Oh, yeah, you're fine, man. You're totally fine. Cool. All right. Because, um, like, generally, I, I when I do my podcast by myself, it's usually somewhere around the hour mark because I run out of things to say because I'm not talking to anyone. But, like, now that I'm actually interviewing people, I'll go for, like, I'll do, like, a Joe Rogan segment if I have to, three hours long. But I'm not going to I'm not gonna take three hours of your time, but... No, I, I think I got you confused with somebody else. I have like three podcast interviews today. And I think you were the guy that wasn't. Um, I think the other guy just said three questions, 10 minutes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. I like, to, I, 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 I like to keep it raw. I like to keep it, you know, just like a conversation. Yeah. I, do have quest, I do have questions prepared, but like I kind of just throw them in when I feel like they fit or whatever. And I, I can ramble on, dude. Yeah, and I love that. That's perfect. <laughs> um, so does your – do you still keep in contact with your son? Like does he have a YouTube channel or anything? Mm -mm. I'm sorry. No, not at all. He just – what happened is I just spoiled him, you know. I yeah. literally have to talk to that kid. And, I mean we talk to emails, whatever, but, you know, teenagers don't even need their parents. You know, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, like, it was kind of like the same thing with my father. I moved out when I was 17 and just never talked to him. And we haven't, I spoke to him one time going to Desert Storm and he's still, he's like 75. We don't talk. And now I'm doing it with my son and my father did it with his dad. So yeah. hopefully my son can break that whole, and it's just like the whole family on my dad's side. They don't talk or anything. It's just like, but I don't know. I mean, he just turned out to be a jerk like his mom. I'm talking about my son. And yeah. it's sad to say that, but he just, and he ain't getting a video game or whatever. And I just spoiled him and just gave him PlayStation, Xbox. And, you know, he was running over hookers when he was three years old. <laughs> you know, I just, I'm going to give my, I'm going to give my kid everything my father didn't give me. And, you yeah. know, it just backfired, you know, and. I tried, and I was on opiates, and, you know, I just, you know, me and I, I was looking at this family, and I'm just like, I got to go, man. I'm just a zombie junked out, having problems with the police, and, I mean, the VA got me on these pills trying to get me off of opiates, and just I never take pills. If you're depressed, deal with it, because antidepressants don't work. I mean, they literally... They really mess with people's heads, and the pharmaceutical companies don't care. Yeah, you know? I, 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 I used to be really depressed and, and anxiety terrible, and I'm, I'm glad that my head's clear of that. They said your best days are in high school. No, nah, I had a small penis and was bullied all the time. <laughs> my best days are right now at 51, dude. I'm sitting here talking with you smoking some dabs and this is what i do for a living when i'm done with you i'm gonna do some cameos hang out maybe take a nap and watch some tv yeah you're, you're living the life i mean that's i mean i gotta check out your channel because i thought that your channel was the one with the puppy no 
<laughs> no. What puppy? I don't have. Well, hey, I do... When I went back on, I went back on Twitter last. Literally, I got like fifteen people that all, had, and I just say yes to everybody because I don't want to turn anybody down. So yeah. I like kind of you because you started saying you did have a bunch of videos, and I went to your channel and. It was just like this little chihuahua that follows you around all everywhere. Okay. Well, no, I do, I do, I do actually have uh, a dog that is half chihuahua, but he's not really featured in any of my videos. All okay, right, cool. Well, I got, I got like a half husky, half chihuahua. Half husky, half chihuahua. Yeah, you wonder how that sex scene worked out. What? Right? <laughs> yeah, it's. It's not. It's over in the other place. But yeah, well, I got a dog. That's a. It's got. It's funny, dude. It's on some of my videos. <laughs> yeah, definitely. On, it's on almost every one of my streams. How how big is it? Is looks it looks like Gizmo. It looks like Gizmo, dude. Is it as big as? Is it as big? So it's a small dog then. No, uh, no. When I hold it's, it's kind of pretty big. It's, I mean, it's it's got that Chihuahua face, but then it's got the husky <laughs> kind of ears and body. That's. I didn't even know that could be possible. Either either the chihuahua was climbing a ladder or the husky was tearing up some, you know? <laughs> I would love to see that sex scene for sure. He rescued it, so we really don't know the facts of, you know, who was who. But, right. yeah, a lot of people with huskies come up and say, oh, my God, I can see the hus a husky in that dog. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's cool. So you live in a hotel then? Yeah, I owned a house and I sold it to a college. Then I just gave my ex-wife a house with three acres, a oh, pool, wow. garage. I'm done for now, but I'm going to get a little house. I didn't use my VA loan yet. So in America, you get a VA loan for being in war. Yeah. And I'm sad for just getting a house with just my name on the deed. Because, you know, people get married and get houses together. And in the end, 50 out of 50, it don't work out. <laughs> but wouldn't wouldn't like living in a hotel be more expensive than just like renting an apartment or something? Not at all, bro. If you think about it, man, you you got your electric bill, your heat. I run my AC all day long, heater in the winter. I don't have any bills come to my house. My internet, my cable TV, guess, that yeah. all, bro. And then like if you don't like your neighbors, they change in a few days. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Some strange lady that comes and takes your sheets, your towels, they're all washed. Yeah. I mean, if you think about it. And sometimes they have specials, dude, where I'm only paying, you know, $1,400 a month per place. But this isn't a hotel right here. I was staying in hotels all the way up through. But this isn't a hotel. This is actually my buddy's place. Oh, okay. You, you don't want anybody to know about. Yeah, yeah. I guess I'm going to be going into an apartment. And then I'll have my own studio like you. And then I'll wait for my Netflix series. Do you have, like, is there, like, a Netflix series in the works? Or are you just, like, hoping for the best? Um, I actually, no, I'm just, I actually have a couple people. And my I got an Audible coming out, which would be on Amazon, <laughs> Apple. We just got done with it. It's, like, me talking to you just like this, but you're going to listen to my life story. And if I can get down to that Amazon list where the daily j jumps up on the list, yeah, it can skyrocket like the, the idiot John Bolton's book, <laughs> you know, since there tries to rip on the White House for money. Right. But it, it, it's one thing to hate somebody like Trump or whatever. I'm not political, but to sit there and, you know, go against national security to sell a book, that I would just call that idiot. Yeah. Um, did, uh, when you were a roofer, did you, did you enjoy that? Do you ever miss it? I love it, man. And I, I don't miss it, but I loved it as I started at 17 and just, as long as you did your job, you got high at lunch, you just got high on the way to the work and just, you got dirty. There was always just hot chicks in the pool, two houses down. I mean, the women that would hit on you, if you were a good looking roofer and, <laughs> Then I would commercial roofing. I would go out of town. I'd leave my chick I didn't even like for a week. Just hang out. We would take over towns, do all the women. One guy would get a DWI, and we'd go on to the next town. Yeah. And just, like, party, partying and working. I just love being outside, just working hard, dude. I could never put a tie on and sit in an office 
with a bunch of people around me in a cubicle. Yeah. I just, you know, I'm like a bowl in a china closet. Just, you know. <laughs> People, people love me, but you know, it just like I, I had to be in construction. There was no way you could tie me down in an office seat. Right. So, like, I have actually... thrown a hammer at me, going, "If I ever see you again, it'll be too soon." <laughs> There's a meeting at nine a.m. Everybody be there. Yeah, it's almost it's almost like everyone's just a fake person in an office scene, you know. So like when you're roofing, everybody's real. Everybody just expresses their opinion. If they're sick of your shit, they're gonna tell you right then and there. Yeah, you got one guy that's on the run, two ex cons. Yeah. And you got some old lady with her sister. Oh, these guys are so nice. <laughs> they sandwiches. Man, I used to work on a crew. If the homeowner ever came out with a pizza or something, we jumped two stories to get at that thing. <laughs> <laughs> The guy had a buddy of mine. He be just as fast as me, man. We were partners. I was shoe nice money, and he was T money grip. And there was <laughs> there was no two men that could do what we could do um, as far as roofing in upstate New York right. back in the nineties and late nineties when we were nuts. Yeah, it's but I mean times have changed now. Like you can't get away with drinking on the job or smoking weed on the job. Like you could get fired instantly. My father, that was his job. My father's a jerk, and his job was he worked for the electric company, and he he ran upstate New York for years, and he was the guy that went to, like, the um, four guys sitting at the bar because they started back in the 70s. They'd drink, and they'd go fix, fix the electrical poles and whatever. But my father would come in, and he'd find people at bars, and he'd warn them and warn them, and there'd be a meeting, and he actually would – come home and say, yeah, I had to fire a guy today. I'm like, man, how do you do that job? Yeah. You got to gotta be heartless. But my father got rid of the family dog because he ate one of the corners of his encyclopedias in the library. Oh, yeah. And he just, he just left him out in this neighborhood. And, uh, you know, once I, once my dad did that, I knew he was an asshole and I was glad I got my mom's genes. Because my mom, she's passed away. She died from just heavy out vodka use. Right. And she'd give you $5 when she only had $2 in her pocket. This lady would go beyond anything to help out anybody. And she was nothing about charity. And my father wouldn't piss on one of his sons if we were on fire in a ditch. You know what I mean? Yeah. So did he... It's not even a sad thing, bro. I mean, there's so many people out there that are so worse off in the world, I'm saying. Yeah. As far as just being a human being and having rights and just your whole life is just being tormented and watching your sisters and mothers go off to, you know, pre-planned marriage. And, and I, I'm going to worry about it just because I don't talk to my father or whatever. No, you're only one soul. You're all by yourself on this earth. And don't ever let the opinions of people in your world today control your tomorrow because they won't be in it. Yeah, exactly. And a lot of people have a problem with small problems. Like they don't, they don't, they don't have the perspective of the rest of the world. They don't realize that their problems are nothing compared to everyone else's. You know. Now, I was born a messiah, so it's real easy for me to understand. But I, I'm just talking about there's people out there in the world that they don't see anything, <laughs> any kind of just you know, you know what you're seeing on the news down in Minneapolis, but. There's people out in the suburbs. They they don't know anything about this. You know what I mean? Yeah. They got their underground pool in their neighborhood. I mean, I think more people are starting to come together a little bit because you have your own issues. You're going to get out into that street and protest, whether it's about abortion, gay rights, you hate Trump, um, you're sick of watching cops kill people, and you, you know, the news just, you know, CNN, and they just push it and push it. You know, half the people wouldn't even know about, you know, blocking a freeway. If these, I mean, and it's just sad that the government in Seattle, look at what's going on with Seattle. And, yeah. I mean, it's so chaotic, and I always thought about this in my head. Eventually, there's going to be nothing, and there's only going to be a few survivors chasing down that can of ravioli. Yeah. And I'm going to be at Office Max, dude, just dipping erasers in my blue fondue fountain, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I will make I will make it to the shoe world order, bro. 
Yeah, I mean, it's just 2020 alone has been insane. I go to my, like, when all this, when the George Floyd stuff started to happen, it was like every, every single Twitter post was just something about the protests or George Floyd. And it was like, what the hell is going on? Like, you know, I feel like we're heading in in a bad direction where we're going to end up in World War Three or something. Yeah, I'm just going to be an internet comic to bring comic relief to people till either I die or humanity's going, bro. I don't want to meet nobody unless it's a contract with Netflix or Hulu. I don't want to meet anybody. Uh, you know, it's just like eight street, eight street job. Yeah, I'll take that. But yeah. so many. Well, day in and day out, we're in Denver. Can we meet you? We want to smoke weed with you. We came all the way here to see you. I did that every day, twice a day, dude. It's great living off of the fans' lunches and shots and whatever, but I'm so sick of humanity in person to person. After just all I've been through, I just I don't even want to see people, you know? Right. It's just like, you know, and eventually, you know, I, and I don't really talk about my personal life and probably not even with you, but there's a whole life behind me, dude. <laughs> Woman, step kids, houses. Yeah. There's a whole nother world. I just don't bring them into it. <laughs> Never yeah. will. Well, you kind of touched, you kind of touched on it a little bit when you did your two part series of, of your whole life story. Yeah. But, you know, what are we going on for a time, bro? I'm a, I just, I'm kind of caught for the day. Are we going on an hour? Yeah, we're about an hour and sixteen. We can end it. We can end it now if you if you figure this is good enough. Uh, yeah, I'm not now. It's no biggie. I, like I said, I want to do a part two, but don't don't ever make something go too long, bro. Because the mind only has so long to do their little things, their activities. So if a human being only has so much time to go on YouTube during that day, are they going to watch a two, three hour H3H3 H3 and miss everything else? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I would always just, I don't know, it's weird. I always think get the questions out, interview the person and move on. Don't talk about anything other than, I'm just giving you advice. Yeah. Dude, but I'm getting you confused with somebody with a, a video of a dog. <laughs> right. So, no, like, no, no, you're squared away, dude. And like I said, we're friends forever now, dude. Well, that's awesome. Yeah, I was actually, you know, I was getting ready to wrap things up anyway. I kind of asked you everything I had on, on, on my page here, so. Well, what's going on now is I got my trunk being worked on by these guys that just show up in a truck. Yeah. And I got to get the thing to be able to pop open and close because the brake light's not working, so. It's just like I know they're out there. But okay. This is a good interview, man. I, I like the setup, dude. Yeah, for sure. So we'll end it here. Um, I just want to thank you for coming on the podcast. That's it for this episode of the Dynamite Gizmo. Clips. Make sure you do clips. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, Make, I... making fun of Team Star and H three H three and throwing them on Twitter. Yeah. No, <laughs> I, I know, I know. I'm deaf. I, I. That's what I've been doing. You know. Hey, make sure you message me your YouTube link, bro. Yeah, for sure. All right. You All right, have a man. Good Saturday, man. Yeah, I appreciate you coming sure. on here. Hey, I appreciate your time. You know what they say at the end. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. <laughs>